I want to welcome you to week two of the study in Romans. You know, we finished up, uh, well, two weeks two a week ago on our in him scripture study. And like I say, I'm probably going to talk about this study for for a long time because uh, I mean, we spent ten months over 10 months in that study, and I want to encourage you to go back to June the 21st and and go through that complete study. Uh, you talking about drawing strength in, in, in your Christian life. You'll draw strength that, that you didn't know that was possible for you to have in finding out, when you find out what God has written down for you to live in to live by, and to know without a shadow of a doubt where you stand with him. See, see, that's the sad part about a lot of Christian people in this world. They've never found out who God has made them to be, who he says they are. You know, he, they listen to religion and have heard a lot of things in their life, but they've never come to a place where they have just really got down to business and said, Lord, you feed me, you show me. Where, where I'm supposed to be and where I stand with you through the truth and what you have written down. You know, you take a lot of, take a lot of uh, religious sayings and, and believe a lot of craziness that, that man's traditions will throw at you. But what I want to feed you with is what God has determined to put in his holy Bible and give you that, that will strengthen you and help you to come to know who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. It'll change your life. It changed mine. You know, I told, I told them at the time of this recording, this, that one in him scripture study has been downloaded 11,000 times, over 11,000 times at the time of this recording. There's no telling how many, a thousand times it's been downloaded since. But I, w- I want to encourage you, go back to June the 21st of 2021 and start that study. Now, two weeks ago, we started this one. Or a week ago, this is the second week, and, and I want to encourage you to go through this one. Uh, you, Romans is my favorite book. In the Bible, I mean, I reference Romans more than than any other other uh, book in the Bible, and uh, the Lord has led me to go through it, and I want to encourage you to go through it with us, so that we can grow in what God has written down for us all to live in and live by. Go, I'm, I'm telling you, get in these studies with us and allow God to feed you and guide you and strengthen you through your Christian life. I want you to know that the reason I do these prayers at the first of this podcast is because I want the world to come to realize and understand the love that God had for them. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to know that. And that is my desire that everyone that everyone comes to know and understand that God loves them. He's for them. He's not against them. He's not standing against them. He's not trying to hurt them to get their attention. No, he loves them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ 
who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now, all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that I get my eyes opened more and more to these truths every day of my life. And I, and I get them through the Word, through God's Word, through taking His Word and consuming it like, a, like like I would a good meal. And I want to urge you to do the same thing. Consume God's Word. Let His Word feed you and strengthen you and build you. Build your faith on who you are, who the, who God says you are, and just how much He's for you. Glory to God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to be, uh, we're going right down the line here. We've been in Romans 3 all week. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in Romans 3.27. It says, where is boasting then? Is it is excluded by what law of works? Question mark. Nay, but by the law of faith. Now that's that. Might, that's probably a little vague to a lot of people. I know it was to me. I I I went into the New Living and the Amplified to get a a better uh, understanding of this verse. But the New Living says, "Can we boast then?" that we have done anything to be accepted by God. No, because our acquittal is based on is not based on obeying the law. It is based on it is based on faith. And I like to say faith in him, not in us, but faith in him. The Amplified, Amplified Classic says, "Then what becomes of our pride and our boasting?" It is included, excluded, banished, ruled out entirely. On what principle? On the principle of doing good deeds, question mark. It says, no, but on the principle of faith. Faith in what? Faith in him. Faith in what God done through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And that, that's what we're going to talk about, talk about today, that our salvation is based on faith in him. You know, look, this is, this is what I've found out over the years. You know, I was born again in my early 20s. And I, I went to, to a church that the people just desperately wanted to, to do what God wanted them to do in their life. But yet they couldn't see that, that uh, their salvation wasn't hinged on their good deeds. Now, yeah, you say, well, you know, I, I, are, are we not supposed to do good deeds? Absolutely. Absolutely, that you know that's that's what what uh, God leads us to do is is to get out here and and work and love people and be a light to them and help them in any way we can. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that, but those works are not what your salvation is hinged on. Your salvation is hinged on faith in what Jesus Christ done and how that He. He came and paid a, paid the price that that it took 
to pay for everything that man, mankind has ever done. And he knew that. He knew that when he, when, he, when he went to the cross. He knew that he was going to pay the ultimate price. And, and when we come to the, to, to, to the conclusion, a friend of ours told my wife over the weekend, you know, and we love her. We love that family. We've, we've been friends with them for 25, 30 years. I, I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a long time. And uh, uh, her, this, this uh, person told my wife, said, I'm going to, I'm going to come to church every, t- every Sunday. And and that's great. I mean, that's great. Yeah, you, you fail not to assemble yourself together, together. I understand that. But what we n- really need to understand is that is that is it is not our attendance rec- record that merits us anything, but faith in what Jesus Christ done, faith in what He has has given us the promise to stand in and believe it, because. There's millions out here that go to church. I heard uh, a story about Billy Graham, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this because this is this is something that that every religious person, every church goer, needs to know, and and a lot of people know Billy Graham. They know they they know his track record. They know what. What, uh, what he his ministry has done over the years never had a scandal never been put in a compromising position Billy Graham was a a fine outstanding man a minister Christian just you know goes on and on example of, of what a Christian is is uh, all about but Billy Graham said this. And he said he they, he said he come out and told it from the pulpit. He said seventy five percent of of people that profess to be born again are lost. Seventy five percent of the church goers that go go to church, he said, are lost, and that stirred a, a, a really bad stink in the denomination that that Billy Graham was affiliated with and they they called him and told him said you need to come in and and sit down and talk with us we need we need to get to the bottom of this so uh so the story goes that billy go, billy goes in and and uh meets with the i guess the powers that be whatever the, whoever they were and uh they told him said you're going to uh you're going to re- retract that statement. You're going, to, you're going to make an apology, and you're going to retract that statement. And said, said Billy just looked at him for a minute and thought about it. He said, I will. He said, I, I, I'll be glad to. He said, he said, it's not 75%. It's more like 85%. And the story goes that they left him alone because what he was saying was, People didn't realize what salvation really was. It wasn't their good deeds. It wasn't their attendance at church. It wasn't because they had been baptized. It was. It was salvation was faith in what Jesus Christ had done, and and the sal- salvation that He had brought to mankind through Him. Being being crucified, crucified through him being being raised from the dead on the third day, and through faith in what he had done was what saved people. See, we we got it all backwards. Well, I say we religion has it all backwards. Religion says, "Well, I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to straighten up, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that." I don't know how many times I've I've heard. Uh, Preachers say from the pul- pulpit, you need to get down here and get your heart right and, 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 and get back in church and you need to do this and you need to do that. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. What, what the Bible says for you to do is if, if you have sin, to confess your sins. If you're born, truly born again, if you have sin, confess your sins because God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's what a born-again person should do to get back 
where he needs to be with God. First John one and nine. That's what that's what that's that is referencing. And and you know a lot of people you know ministers want to get you to the altar, and there's nothing wrong with going to the altar. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is you need to do what the Bible says to do. And the Bible says if you if you if you sin to confess them, confess them to who? Confess them to Him. Confess your sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I feel like I need to go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 18, I think is what it is. Let me look, let me read it or go back and look at it. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. It says, And all these things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. What, what did he say? Well, he reconciled us to himself. By what? By Jesus Christ. What Jesus done. And he has given us a ministry of reconciliation to let everybody know, said, look, look, he reconciled us. He loved us enough to die on the cross for our sins and to be raised on the third day for our justification. And if we will look to that and understand that our salvation is is based on faith in Him, what He has done, you say, well, the, you're just acting like I don't have to go to church, don't have to do this, don't have to do that. No, I'm saying if you will realize and come to the understanding of who you are and what God has done for you through Jesus Christ, hey, all this other stuff that you're striving to do to, to, to get your heart right, like a, a lot of people, a lot of people uh, yell and tell everybody that's what they need to do. If you will come to the understanding of who you are and what has been done for you and the salvation that has been given you through faith in Jesus Christ, all these other things that we're striving to do will become second nature to us. They'll, be, they'll become what God has meant for us all of our life. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be the first to tell you, I spent a, a lot of decades striving to do what I was supposed to do, but it was only when I come to realize who I was in Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, and who who he had made me to be and what he had done to give me those promises. That's when I come to understand that I was who he had made me to be. And I come to, come to realize that the things that I had felt are, are found to be so hard in my life, the only reason they were hard is because I wasn't living in, in faith in him. I was living in faith in what I could do, how good I could be, how self-righteous I could be. And that's, the, that's just completely backwards to what God wants us to do. He wants us to live in him, to walk in the truth that he has, has, has wrote down for us, what, what Jesus done for us is a free gift, and we'll accept it by faith and walk in who God says we are. Lord, this, this, this world that, 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 that is so dead against us will never be able to touch us, never be able to mess us up in any way, shape, or form. Why? Because we're living in faith in him, living in what he has said or what he has done for us instead of our self-righteousness. That's why that's the reason uh, Romans 3.27 said we can't boast about anything. That's the truth. We can't. I'm not going to try to boast about anything. I am going to boast about what Jesus has done. I'm going to live in faith in what Jesus had, uh, has done. And, and believe that my salvation is based on faith in him. And all these other things will fall in line. I, I'll become stronger. Why? Because I'm living by faith of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, what God has written down for me to live in. Now, I've got a question for you today. Are you born again? Do you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Because if you do, 
Find out who you are. Find out what God has said you are. And that is a new creature. You're the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Not because of your good deeds, but because of him and what he has made you to be. But if you're not born again, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and into your life and save you to be your Lord, Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Be born again today. There's millions out here that believe Jesus is who he says he is and that, that God raised him from the dead to save them. But they've never, they, they have never invited him into their heart. Do that today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Hey, if you're a, a partner of this ministry, I want to take this time to tell you thank you. Thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what we are commissioned to do, and that is to give God's word away all over this planet free of charge, to see people's lives change, to see them come to the realization and the understanding of who God has made them to do to be through Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return over everything that you that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you, if, if you have a prayer request, send those prayer requests to me. I want to I send you scriptures that you and I both can stand on and agree on that God has an answer for that prayer request. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe with you. I'm going to agree with you. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. There again, don't forget, go to June the 21st of 2021. Back up and go through this whole study with us. Through through in, that in him scripture study, and then start in this this study in Romans. I promise you, God's word will strengthen you through through all the things that is standing against you, and you can stand up and say, "Nope." God's word says that I can stand, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigal son dot com.